Hello, I'm Dr. Charlie Collins. Let's talk about research methods. Today I'm going to talk about ethics and social science research. I will discuss the ethical treatment of research participants and ethical guidelines in conducting social science research. Before we jump into our discussion on ethics, let's use a running example of Laud Humphrey's book, Tea Room Trade, Impersonal Sex in Public Spaces to frame our discussion on the ethical treatment of research participants. Humphreys was an ethnographer, which means he actively participates in the context in which he studies, and was interested in the behaviors of men who have sex with men, men, or what we call MSM, men who have sex with men. This was in the 1960s at a time when most gay men were closeted and did not publicly disclose their sexual orientation, even to their families. To study this group of people, Humphreys posed as a lookout in a public restroom in a park where it was known MSM would go to find other male sexual partners. As part of his research, Humphreys collected qualitative data in the form of field notes about his experiences in the restroom. He also took down the license plate numbers of the men coming into and out of the restroom seeking sex with other men. Using those license plate numbers, he tracked down where the men lived and posed as a market researcher to collect additional information from the men, including things like marital status, uh, education, income, so on and so forth. Ethics aside, the book is an incredible read and I'd highly recommend it. It is often touted by qualitative researchers as a gold standard of ethnographic research. I think even the most novice of researchers could identify some ethical issues with Humphrey's study, however. That said, what are ethics in the first place? Ethics are the standards that guide researchers, especially social science researchers, in the line between moral and immoral conduct of research. Not only are there ethical guidelines for conducting research with human subjects or human participants, there are also guidelines for the analysis and reporting of data. We'll discuss both here. First, let's talk about the ethical treatment of research participants. There are four considerations regarding the rights and welfare of research participants. Potential harm, informed consent, deception, and privacy. I will talk about each of these and then I will talk about the guidelines researchers use to address each of these in their research. As researchers, it is our obligation to conduct research in a way that minimizes potential harm to our participants. This includes physical and psychological safety, but I'd argue it also concerns economic, social, and political safety. We cannot conduct research that makes our participants unsafe in any of these ways. Even though one could argue that the Humphrey study did not make participants physically or even psychologically unsafe, it had the potential to harm their interpersonal relationships. Humphrey's research risked outing his research participants, which could have significant personal and social consequences. If the wives of the men in the study found out about their sexual relationships with other men, they might risk divorce. If their employers found out, they may risk being fired. These are serious risks of these men and of this research. It is also our obligation as researchers to provide informed consent to our research participants. Our participants should always be given enough information about the research to make a rational decision about their voluntary par participation in the research. Humphrey's participants were not informed of the intentions of the research. He told them he was a market researcher and could not therefore consent to participation based on the information provided. Humphrey's study also deceived participants. Although deception is sometimes necessary as an ashes conformity study, it can be a slippery slope. Humphreys intentionally deceived his participants about the potential for harm and other purposes of the study. When deception goes beyond minimal risk, or risk that participants may see in daily interactions, it is considered unethical. In addition, if a study can be carried out without the use of deception, it should be, and deception should not be used. Humphreys also violated participants' rights to privacy. A participant has a right to decide when, where, to whom, and to what extent the information provided for the study is revealed. The right to privacy also extends to the potential to publicly identify participants. This can happen when 
directly using names or other identifying information or through the triangulation of different points of data that could identify a person. At this point, you may be asking yourself, if Humphrey's study was so egregious, why was it permitted to happen? That's because at the time, in the 1960s, there were no federal or professional guidelines regarding the ethical treatment of research participants. Ethical guidelines were not published until 1979 when the Belmont Report established three ethical principles for protecting human subjects. Respect for Persons states that research participants must be treated as autonomous agents with the freedom to decide what happens to them. Beneficence calls researchers to maximize potential benefits of research to participants and minimize potential harm to them. Injustice means that the benefits and burdens of research should be equitably distributed and not unjustly benefit or burden one particular group above another. These principles have informed the four issues regarding the ethical treatment of research participants. More specifically, researchers are to evaluate potential harm to participants, including a cost-benefit analysis, weighing the potential harm to participants versus the scientific merits of the research. Guidelines also indicate that researchers should develop informed consent procedures that provide enough information about the study so that participants can make a clear and informed decision about their participation in the study. Additionally, researchers should not use deception unless an alternative is unfeasible. If deception is used, researchers are to debrief participants and inform them of the deception used and the potential harms for such deception. Finally, researchers should use the strongest privacy protections possible for their research participants. Two basic forms of protection include anonymity and confidentiality. Anonymity means that participants cannot be identified even by the researcher. Confidentiality means that participants can be identified by the researcher, but, is not, but that information is not shared with others. These guidelines are established to protect participants and reduce any harm that could be given unto them. That is what we have for this discussion on the ethics of research. By now you should be familiar with the ethical treatment of research participants and the ethical guidelines in conducting social science research. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.